Pile driver is our last thing we are going to handle the momentum and then impulse. So let us start by defining what it is, what it consists store, and then we see a question about it. A pile driver consists of a hammer of mass M dropped from height H onto a pile of mass M naught whose pointer is just resting on the surface of the ground. This pile driver is the machine they use when they are drilling some holes around a floor. So that machine is a very, very heavy machine and a lot of force. So it wants to be a hammer and also this one we call the pile. This one, remember this one is always dropping. If it's not dropping on this, as this one, whenever it drops on this, this one is going to be eating into the ground. So this is the level we call a drop. Assuming the ground resists motion of the pile, so the ground also is going to resist some motion of that pile to enter into it with a constant force R. So this one now, when it comes, assuming now it has started the pressing, when it comes now, it first gets on the top of this pile. Now that force it comes with, to force is when I come with the force there, using the Newton's circuit in order to force an action and the So when I press, this pile is going to go into the ground. So when it falls on it, I think you see it's going to push it in the ground. And at this level, that's what they call penetration. But not if this is our ground from here to here, it has that velocity which is going to come with. So the velocity coming with is the one which is going to be the velocity of this pile when it hits it. And then penetrating, this is where it penetrates. But what causes the penetration is the weight on the hammer and then the weight on the pile. So when you add all that weight, it is what is going to be pushing it into the ground. Now, because the ground is going to also resist it with what we call the resistance R. So this is the distance of penetration into the ground. That's an example here. A hammer of mass 100, 1,500 kilograms fall from a height 1.6 meters, as you see, and strikes a pile of mass 500 kilograms. Full stop. After the strike, the hammer and the pile move on together. If a pile is driven a distance of 0 0.3 meters into the ground, so when this one falls in this, this one is going to be driven into the ground because of that force 0.3 meters into the ground. The speed at which the pile, final speed at which the pile starts to move into the ground and the average distance of the ground to penetration. So at here, the point starts has 0 meters per second. Now the one has to get the speed at which this pile is driven into the ground. It's the speed that is, this pile is going to come with here. In simple terms, they want us to find that. So we come into our solution because it's falling. So it's going to be falling in that order. That's where our acceleration is going to be, and it's going to be g equal to nine point eight. The distance before it hits it, it has to cover this distance. So our s there is going to be one point six. Yeah. So now we use the value motion equation motion s. So we have this, it's like our initial is going to be zero. So if you put there, v squared in v zero squared plus two into 9.8, then times 1.6. So from there, our v is going to be So here I'm getting 5.6 meters per second. So this is the velocity at which this pile is going to start moving. Because the velocity at which this hammer is coming is the velocity at which this one is going to move as it should be. So that's going to be our velocity. Start to move into the ground and the average distance of the ground to penetration. Now, because when they come together, they are going to resist. And when they are going to move together, these are now they are going to use the conservation of momentum principle. So from conservation, conservation of momentum. So you see that we are going to be having first before the impact. This was moving at 
from M1, U1, is going to be equal to two, M1 plus M2, then we need that acceleration, which we don't know. Okay, or we can call it, uh, yeah, let's call it G. So now, this says that the impact, the momentum before the impact on the collision is going to be equal to when you add these two weights and then in that colors they are going to be added. Right. Now from here you can already see that when this one, when these two are moving, the before collision, this one was the so one which is moving, so it was having 100, oh, 1,050 kilograms per day. Speed at which it was moving, it was the speed at which it hit this one, which is 5.6 equal to 2. Now the combined mass of these two, 150, then plus 500 U. So we are looking for, for that speed when they are moving together. Now this is the speed when they are moving together, because when they are moving together, the speed is going to change because of the weights. So that you now the speed and that impact so how are you from there is going to be it's going to be 4.2 meters per second now this is the speed when they are together together that's the speed when they start moving together okay now from there, we know that the one that's been the resistance. Now you see that the direction of acceleration is this, is this way. So in other direction of acceleration, in that order, you know that from the 22nd second row, the eleven force will be equal to the mass times the acceleration. So what is pulling it in this direction is going to be this force, which I'll get two thousand g. Then minus this force which is opposing r equal to the mass which is 200 then times the acceleration now we need the acceleration at which this pile i mean at which these two are moving at so from there but from my b equal to u plus a t now from here we need to get our our acceleration which we are going to put into this here so from there we know that if you come here, when at this point of penetration, they are going through the time when they stop. So from there, when they stop, let us use the, I think let us use the time. And the frame of penetration is going to be 2, the square n plus 2, and s. So at the point when this one has penetrated, it's going to be stopping. So meaning, our V there is going to be 0. And then our the speed at which it's moving, this is the speed at which it's moving. Then we have the distance which is covering this is the distance here. So this is going to be 0 squared equal to 2, 4.2 squared, then plus 2a into 0 0.3. This distance here is what we are looking for. 0 0.3. We are looking for that acceleration there. For the acceleration that is going to be taking us there. This is what we are looking for. So from there, I can set my A is going to be then divided by it's going to be negative on the left side, negative 29.4 meters per second squared. So you've got the acceleration at which this particle is going to be moving. Here now, in this distance here, so that's the acceleration there. So from there, now we have 2000 into 9.8 minus r equal to 200, 2000 into now our acceleration, which is negative 2.94. So from there, and I take this side and I bring this side, and they are in now my r from there. Is going to be so 
it's going to be 7, 8, 4, 0, 0, and that is going to be the Newton the So, this is the resistance applied by the ground at this point of penetration. And so, that's what we have from there. From here, we first come and we get our A there. Then after getting our A, we come and then we substitute A to that T. I. So that's it. The acceleration because that we are going to be penetrating downwards. So that's it. This is zero because when it has penetrated, it's not going to move, it's going to stop until it goes back. But at that point, when it has covered just this, that's the acceleration is going to be used. So that's it about the fire driver. I wish you well.